In the Commonwealth, the women are the pool of resources that make up most of the Commonwealth nations that are still dormant. They're the ones who carry a lot of burdens and they're the ones who are the alternate services that many governments are still struggling to provide for their peoples. The Millennium Development Goals, there are eight goals and there's one goal that is supposedly a women's goal, but the reality is that all of the other goals, their achievement revolve around women's uh, development. The Barbados meeting is the Women's Affairs Ministerial Meetings. It's a meeting that brings together Commonwealth Ministers of Women's Affairs. The meeting will be looking more closely at what we call gender responsive investments and that is trying to look at the way the world has planned its investments, the way it has outlined uh, use of resources and how these have responded to the needs of all citizens, particularly women, and what could countries be doing differently. You'll be hearing a couple countries share their experiences of how they've used either their laws or their business act or their legal architecture, that is how their laws play out in society, how they've used that and reviewed those to respond to the employment needs of women, to the social protection needs of women, to the access to credit and, uh, and finances for, for, for livelihoods and for economic development of women. In an age where resources have become scarce, in an age where governments are scrambling to look for um, resources to meet their basic obligations to the citizen, philanthrocapitalism becomes a ready answer. We need to think outside the box. By philanthropic capitalism, we mean two things. The narrow definition is the way that a new generation of super rich donors and corporate executives are increasingly using the tools of business, the tools of capitalism, for doing good in the world. So that's the narrow definition. The broader definition is that, in a sense, capitalism is only ever going to be successful if it's sustainable. And I think today's business leaders increasingly realize that. And therefore, doing good is not about charity. It's actually about building sustainable businesses and sustain sustainable capitalism for the long term. One of the most important impacts of the philanthropists is a, is a certain category of them, which we call philanthropists, who are the celebrity philanthropists who can push an issue up the global agenda, get people talking about it. And I'd love to see more of these celebrities talking about gender issues, going to all the big meetings of the, of the governments of the world and business meetings and saying, gender is absolutely central, let's campaign on that. It's not just about the money that comes in from the philanthropic capitalists, it's also the business mindset that they bring. They bring that focus on outcomes. They also bring their business skills on how to solve problems. So many of these people have made money from solving problems. They can think differently, they can challenge orthodoxies, they can do things a different way. And what they also bring is their networks and skills. As a lot of them say, you know, when whoever I phone in the world, whether it's Barack Obama or the Pope, they take my calls. People like that who, can have, who have such influence in the world can be a real, really powerful voice and champion for poverty issues, gender issues, and all the problems the world's facing there's a market to be made between the philanthropic capitalists and the developing country governments. And because of the, the Commonwealth's central place, it really could help to bring these people together, open up the debate, open up the space, um, to talk about what changes in laws do we need, how do we get new ideas out to the, to the philanthropic capitalists themselves. So it's that position at the heart of the system that allows the Commonwealth to really innovate and test new ideas and build these new partnerships. Some of the things, messages we're hoping to communicate to governments is that in the face of the crisis and as they plan to move beyond the crisis, they need to seek for alternate models of doing government business. They need to look for alternate sources of finances and they need to harness the resources that they have, which they have overlooked over the decades. Women are a resource for nations and they are the solutions to the problems of the nations. They are not a burden.